it boosts your uh, let's get into what we have for today. Okay, so um okay, so from the from what we had last week, we looked at um Okay, we're looking at getting started physically, so just what you need to get started. We looked at a lot of basics uh, prior to this particular session. So we're just looking at getting started and um, what things you need actually. So previous course, we looked deeply into what exactly you want to choose or what exactly you need to um, look out for when selecting your broker. So um, it was actually deep and then, yeah, there's a lot of scam brokers, let's say. And some may not be scam, but then let's just say greedy because they may be charging you too much for trade. And then there's, there's so much you actually need for you to be a successful trader. So it's not just any broker that is going to give you the best platform you need like that. So we looked at that. And then, um, yeah, we looked at some, okay. For those who are not here also, prior to this as well, we looked at, um, Trading technology. So, in the course of maybe this particular or the the um, upcoming sessions, if there are any time to come up, we use often that you are not familiar with. You could ask any question in the chat, and we will be um, we'll be happy to answer you. Okay. So, um, this course here, we look at what you need to get started with trading. So. Um, logging in to your trading terminals, registering your broker, getting your account details, what exactly, what are you seeing as a description of everything you see on your uh, trading, trading platform. And then by the way, we have exciting news for you guys, so stay tuned till the end of the course and then it's pretty exciting. Okay, so um, what do you need to get started? Of course, you need to register with the broker. You need to register with the broker. You need to open accounts and get your accounts credentials. You need to download the trading platform, then log in and start trading. So it will show you everything here step by step. So on your own, you should be able to you should be able to um, do all of this. So I'm going to take you through this step by step. Okay, so um register an account with any of our recommended brokers. Well, we advise these brokers, so it's, you're not actually compelled to use any of these brokers, but then we advise these brokers. So um, the, the, the com, com, comparisons was in the um, last course, so you can actually get the recordings at the PDF, so you don't actually have to go that if you missed any of that. So um, we register with any of the recommended brokers, um, fill in your details accurately, because you need to verify all these details, so they have to be accurate. Then you create your trading accounts on any of the preferred platforms, then MT4, MT5. So you can get all these platforms from both your iOS and your Android. So, okay. Um, this is how your account credentials look. So you get your account credentials, you get the type of your accounts you're trading. So each account type has its own specs, its own specifications, and that. So I try to watch out for that because there are account types that actually charge you so much more to keep your accounts up. So, like, um, important to check that. Then your account number, the trader password, investor password. You said there was, there's a difference between the trader and the investor password. So, trader password is actually a trade password for you as a trader. So, as a trader, you use the trader password because you are the one placing your trade. But then, um, the investor password is just more like um, for observation. So, if I want to watch your trades without being um, able to influence your trades, or let's say, Take orders on your account and all that. So I use your investor password. So that's where I just get to watch when I'm not really able to trade on your account. And then um, the server type is also something you use to log in or log out. No, sorry. It's also something you need while logging in. Yeah. So, and then your leverage. Leverage is quite important. So you get to know what exactly your leverage is on the account. So most of these are things you see. So you won't be um, confused or lost while going into training. Okay, so um, moving forward, 
Yeah, so you can download any of the platforms on iOS and Android. MetaTrader 4 or 5. So the MetaTrader 4 and 5, they are the same terminal. Well, they offer you the same feature. You know, maybe some brokers may have um, the servers on the MetaTrader 4, some may have it on 5. So you choose one. And then the interface is quite is a bit different between the MetaTrader and 4. Well, so, um, Conventional traders are used to MetaTrader 4, like I am used to 4, but then I like 5 because it offers me much more, um, much more vast features. So, but then I'm used to 4, so I trade on 4, sometimes I have to go on 5 to count keeps and all that. So, it's much easier. Sometimes um, trading is actually much easier on 5, let me say. Well, then it's not really, it's not really a problem, but like, it just offers you more features to kind of um, make things easier for you. So. You choose which one you prefer, and then with some brokers like QT doesn't use the um, MetaTrader 5 platform. Vantage has both, um, Spotify have both. So you say you need some, you need some. So, uh, okay, so, um, yeah, so um, the first thing you do after downloading any of the platforms is to log in. So um, this is how it looks on iOS. It may look different on Android, but then it's the same. It's the same process or the same technique. So just create, um, go to your settings on iOS, new account, then you search for the um, server. So if advantage, advantage day, the server advantage like two, advantage like five, like we saw in the previous slides. And um, well, when you search for a server, you see it's there and then you select the one you use. And then, um, so you use the, um, so you use you put in your details appropriately as you get from your um, from your brokers. So your server there login is always a number. So login is not really commission number and your password. Yeah. So you could use the investor password there. You could use the um, trader password, whichever one. So there are two types of passwords. The investor password is for observation. Like I said earlier, then you sign in. So when you sign in, what are you going to see? And how do you know you're seeing? So, okay, um, signing in, your first screen there is the quotes screen. So the quotes screen just has all your quotes. So basically uh, anything you need, or let me say the prices, the information on the pair, this is the quotes. So this is, so um, here, first, day, first thing there we have the quotes for, right? so we have quotes for, okay. The first, that's the search bar you're seeing up there. So if you want to, for instance, the pairs you're having up here are not enough for you, or there's a pair you prefer to trade that you're not quite uh, seeing, you're not, you don't see here, you should be, you'll be able to search for and add to your list of instruments here. So that's what you have that search bar up there for. So um, the next thing here you have, um, the next thing here, that's the pairs you're seeing here. So here you USD, GPSD, these are the instruments of trading. So you can see Bitcoin, you can see the shares you're trading, the first share trade, indices, whatever, gold, um, silver, whatever it is. So they come there. And then the next thing here we have is the um, bid and the ask price. We explain what the bid and ask price is. If you are not clear with it, you could ask or check this lesson. So the bid and the ask price then. What we have here is the low and the high. So this is just the lowest and the highest points in the market reached in the day. I don't know if it's ever in not maybe it's um, measured in a different time frame, but then it's often in the day. So yeah. And then um what we have here is um the current time trading and the spread. So this 12 here we're seeing here means 12 points. Yeah, and your spreads accounted in points and not tips. The difference in points and pips, which I also explained previously. So the difference in points and pips. So your pairs are cut, your spreads are counted in points and not pips. So we have it 12 points here, which is about 1.2 pips. It's actually quite high. So I won't trade with a broker that is giving me 1.2 pips because I'm sure you're using a lot of money taking that in. But well, you're seeing um, here you're having 26, which is 2.6 pips. 2.6 pips is actually quite high. So I, I will not actually trade with a broker giving me that much. But then at this time, the market was closed. So normally when the market is closed, spreads are trend very, very high. Either the market is closed on the weekends or the market is closed at the end of the day. So at the end of each day, about an hour, okay, 30, 45 minutes, 
market is always closed and then notice spreads are very high. But then outside those times, it's actually very, very low. This is spreads have lost five points. That was very competitive, so no really an issue. And then the trading time there, so it's sometimes depends on the country or the nectar trader that country. It may differ, but then on your, if you are using desktop version, desktop version uses um, the standard standard time for timing. So it, it, may be, it may differ by from your time by one hour, two hours, three hours. It depends on the trade with the terminal platform. So I think it's about two hours away from the um, standard time. So uh, you check it and then you compare. So um, the change, what is the amount of price? This amount, the price of an instrument has changed with UAP. Yeah, so it's just the percentage of change in UAP. So if it's a positive change, as mean price went from one to two, that was 50 or 100% change. So, like, so that's how it is calculated. But then you need price movements are very, very little. So changes don't always look so massive like that. So, um, okay, I think that's what we have here for now. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so um, if you were to click to search the search bar that we had in the previous slide, you would see your list of instruments appear like this. So you see cryptos, you see euro shares, energies, fixed forex crosses, exotics, a lot of things here. So there's this 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 is the instruments that broker offer. So you can choose any of these instruments to trade. But then the broker has instruments here. There are some instruments that you can be able to access from brokers. So it means Luca has all these instruments available in the server, but then for different account types, you will see some instruments being trade. For instance, your broker may not allow you to trade cryptos on a standard account, but then it will still be here, but then you won't be able to trade cryptos. So you want to trade cryptos with that same broker, you may have to go in maybe pro accounts and ECN accounts, depending on your, whatever the broker has said. So that, um, but then you know, Prior to opening your account, you can know that you know the, the pairs that are available to trade. So you have all of them at your disposal. So you don't really have to stress about. So um, the next screen here, we have this chart screen. So this is just your trading chart. So this is where you reach the reading the market or whatever it is that you're looking at. So um, if you have, okay, so what we have here now, this is the chart for Euro USD. So um, explain what we have, in, what we see here. So what we have up here is the time frame. So what this means is that um, each of these candles you're seeing here, each of them started and finished within this time frame. So we're seeing H1 here. H1 means one hour. H4, there's H4 time frame, that's four hours. M5, five minutes, M15, 15 minutes, M30, 30 minutes. D1, one day, and so on and so forth. Yeah, as high as, as, high as one year, four years time frame for whoever is trading that so like, it means that each of these each of these um, candles were completed within this time frame. So it's, uh, it's something to know. You have to know which time frame you're trading on because the amount of movements you see on higher time frames is not going to be as much as it looks on lower time frames. So if you look at your chart on the minutes time frame, the movements are very, very rapid. So like currently really trading with that's except if that's your trading style. So time frame also affects your trading style. And so there's something we'll look at later on, later on. So okay. So you have your your pair here. You have your pair here. That's the next thing you're seeing. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, you have the pair you're trading here. That's you see you see the time frame there. So the lines mm -hmm. maybe may not appear there, but this is meta trigger five, so it's quite um much more informative. Let me see. Because on your trade meta trader four platform, you don't see this much information. The best you may see is just zero USD. But then you don't see the market is closed, you don't see the full like, full name for the pairs and stuff like that. So you have the pairs there, you have the uh, description there, and then you have the, the market, you can see if the market is closed or not. So this is some of the things you see on um, MT5, but you don't see this on MT4. So on MT4, the most you can see is maybe just the time frame and the, Pay your trading, but then everything else is the same. So the forex chart is a time versus price chart. So what this means is just that okay, you're having the time here, all right? You're having the time down here, and then you're having the price up here. So that's that's this. Let me see. Sorry, let me see something. 
Let me see at this time here. At this time, this was the price somewhere here. This is just how you read your chart. So you're looking at it this way. So that's what's time. What was what's the price right now? What is the price five years ago? What was the price two days ago? So you can actually check all of this. So you have to know you need to go to where exactly you are in the market. So yeah, so let's move on. Okay. All right, so um, you notice those three buttons that we at the top there. So the first one is for the crosshair. So the crosshair is just to let you know where exactly you are at that time. So for instance, let me go back to that previous slide and kind of explain it. Okay, so for instance, if you were to place your crosshair, sorry, let me see. If you were to place your crosshair somewhere here, crosshair is just a cross. So it kind of just shows you where you are in the market. So if you place your crosshair somewhere here, it kind of extends to your um, price line and your time. So you know the exact time and the exact price at that time. So if I want to know, um, now if I want to know what price was price at this exact, at, at this particular point, at this, at this particular point, and my crosshair is here, is here. So I'm seeing the time. So I extend it to, I see it at this point, and then to actually show you price at that point. So it's used for your analysis. So you want to know what price is doing now, or where exactly the price is right now. So you're seeing it, and then it's guiding your trade. So you're trying to know. So the only the, the things here you're seeing here now, they are not really much enough. Let me say they're not enough information for you, because well, the only thing you're seeing here is your price um, changing as the bid and the ask price, which is not enough information for analysis eventually if you're doing your analysis. So you want to know where exactly price is in case you want to use your um, stop or um, limit entry orders, any orders, you need to know the exact price you wish to enter. So you have to enter. Now, um, each of these, you notice these intervals. So these are just, um, they, they, they could see five periods, they just price intervals. So, they know we really need them because we don't see by much for them for psychological that we may see some of the levels as key levels because we just they had um, um certain increments so we differ for different prices so okay so that is all so let's move on okay so the next thing we have there the next symbol there we have is the Indicator list that's this F kind of symbol so is indicator list. So indicators are tools that take into account price changes and volume per time to give a clear representation of the current market conditions. So um what this is just what this means is well indicators are kind of they just show you what is happening. They kind of tell you this is what you cannot see about what's happening right now. So let's give you a bigger picture or a better picture. So you kind of just Draw out the whole uh, description of what you are seeing. So it's like you're seeing one plus one, and you know you're seeing one plus one. So let us show you that one plus one is two. So they're not really showing you what is going to happen in markets, but they're showing you what is happening. So it gives you a much more um, precise, um, let's say, idea of what is actually happening, which is good for analysis eventually. So people trade with them because I personally don't like trading with people. Except so we just pretty busy in Twitter. We don't really use save much as like I don't I don't like to trade in Twitter. But in Twitter lag. So they show you what's they show you what has happened already. So you're kind of seeing the past in different kind of representation. It's not really it may be good for some traders, it may be good for some um may be good for some methods or some strategies, you know. It's your choice. So We'll look into some of the indicators for the on case in the study. Sorry. So um, the next thing here we have is the um, object list. So now when you're trading, you need to draw a lot when you're trading. You can't actually trade successfully without drawing on your charts. You need to draw your chart because your drawing, drawing is drawing, drawing shows you things that you are not you are not seeing. So the way when you draw, when you draw, when you draw, you you see you will see a much better. So, so um, 
indicators are the, the object list, they just give you tools to draw. So you could see lines, triangle, rectangles, um, a lot of things. So they're all there. So look, let me, let me go into the technical analysis deeper. We'll see the functions of most of all of this because these are all technical analysis tools as fundamental analysts. Fundamental analysts actually don't really throw up. They don't throw up. They don't throw at all. Let me see. Maybe draw, maybe just a little bit of them. They don't draw. They don't draw at all. So like um, moving forward. Okay, so you have these buttons here. Now you may not see the buttons that play like this on the touch with that focus. It may just be text with trade. So you could just see trade there and then be able to place your trade. But then this button here, it produces that enable you to place the trades. So you click them and then you set your trades by yourself, orders and all that. So we'll look how we look how to do that also return. So okay. Okay, so the main screen. So this is where you see how things are going. It might be very discouraging at some point because for instance, now you're seeing this looking good, you're up 2,000. If things were not this way, you would have been down 2,000 or even more than 2,000. So this gives you, this, is, this just shows you how things are going. So um, the first thing that you have is the balance. So the balance is what you have left. So it's your, is it a, if you don't read it at all, so your balance would just be your, um, the balance will be money you sent to your broker to deposit into your account. So it's just be initial deposit. When you start trading, your balance changes. The balance is um, depends on the amount of profits or losses you close. And your balance is what you've closed. So if now my balance here is 73K, I am using 100, sorry. sorry. So I'm using 20K now, my balance will still be at 73K until I decide you know, I'm satisfied with this loss and to prevent future losses and or whatnot, then you just close it. So you may close your trade, your balance becomes whatever it is, plus or minus what you have. So the equity is just your balance, but then it shows you what is going to happen if you close that trade. So it's just your balance plus or minus your profit or loss. So you don't have to be calculating on time. You would know that okay. So in 3,534.39 plus 2,173.33, you know, fast enough to always know how much you're going to be closing at. So the equity just shows you what you close at if you decide to take your position out. So next thing you have is the margin. Next thing you have is the margin, sorry. The next thing you have is imagine. It's already the video will come up very soon. I know the issues. Okay, sorry guys for that interruption. Pardon me for the interruption there. Okay, so um, we're talking about, okay, we're going to margin. So the margin here is, okay, imagine it doesn't show you a used margin, but the margin is your used margin. So we had explained what we meant, what we meant by the used margin in the previous course we talked about in the day. So this is the amount of money broker the amount of your deposit broker is using to keep that liquidity. So uh, this margin here is 44, 640. Yes. Out of the 73K, broker is using 44K out of it to hold that liquidity. So it means that is the amount of money that you have no access to right now because broker is using it to keep your trade open. So it's important for you to know 
what book are you using because you know how much you have left. So yeah, three margins, how much you have left to open more trades. So uh, you want to know, okay, you have 31 key left to open more trades, what exactly are you doing? But then if you exhaust free margin, and you put in account that's very high risk. Now, for the margin level, this is how it's calculated, the equity, um, the equity against the used margin, but the used margin times 100%, so it's a percentage. And when your used margin, the margin level is already close to below 100%. It means your equity and your used margin are the same. So it means the broker is literally using all the money you have to keep your trade open. So very, very risky. So even your broker 73k and use all your 73k, so it's like, it's more or less taking a hundred percent risk on your trade. So you give look at all your deposits to keep your trade open. That is bad. So the moment you have a hundred percent, so your this margin, your margin level could be as high as fifty thousand percent up. So if you see your risk, your margin level that high. So it just shows you how heavy your account is. So if your account is below hundred percent, you mean the broker is using almost all the money to keep that trade open. So it means if anything was happening to that trade. You can try to use that much money to keep that you so you're using as much. So you have to be careful to keep your margin level above 100% every time you're trading. Because if it gets this bad, now the trade we are having here is um is a this this I would now I would never trade this on the live accounts. I would not I, I can't I can't I can't do this because this is a much this is this is very very high risk. Now your broker is using it's four thousand dollars out of your money to keep the trade open. That's very risky. Anything could have could happen. Now this trades. This is about say ten seconds after I place these orders on the demo. So give it a day or give it ten minutes. It will be far worse than this. So uh, you can hear my trading style. Or do, or somebody could be trading this one and then you just do this. And ten seconds later, he's out of the trade and he's satisfied based on his trading style. So well, then it's not advisable to train this massive, but then I need this to, to represent, to show exactly what I'm trying to say. So um, what we have here again is, um, sorry, is um, so what we have here, okay, this is your profit and your loss. So profit is always in blue, your loss is always in red. You still see the negative symbol for it. And then um, here we have the current price and price you place your order. So you're in a buy position, you expect, Current value to be higher than the value to keep that. So you have you you see it from there. So you're having 45, 48, 5, 20, 26, and the current price now is 48, 5, 70, 47, 5. So we discovered that your value is higher. So it's a winning trade for you. So it's no really no problem. So okay. So the list of pairs you have there is just a portfolio. So a portfolio is whatever you're investing in. So you could see your stocks, indices, and all that. So those are your um that's your portfolio. Okay, so we'll be we'll use most of these terms later on it because so it's good to know. Okay, so yeah, so you have options to modify, edit your trade, and lot of things like that. Uh, if you enter a trade, you are stuck in that trade, so you cannot come back to say you want to change the price to keep that or anything. So you have to um, either close your trade or I don't know, make things better for yourself or something. But then you can't come back and try to change the price at which you took that trade. So you can modify your orders, though. But then if, like, if you're not satisfied with your levels and all that, you just modify the levels and all that. So, Let's look at some of them. So, okay, when you go to modify your orders or you want to take a position, this is how it looks. So, the first thing that you have is market expectation. This is just the way the market, the order is going to be filled, or the way, sorry, the kind of order you are taking. Now, you could be taking penny orders. Penny orders was something we looked at earlier. So, you could be taking, you could be, you could be taking penny orders. Penny orders, that's the limit orders and the stop orders. That's buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. Take a penny orders. And well, market execution means that's an instant order. So it means you're not really waiting. But the penny orders, like we explained, you actually be waiting. You want the market to, you want the broker to wait for a couple of minutes, see some, uh, some say, specific instructions made before the broker takes that trade for you. 
So we'll be using this, sorry, depending on what you want, but then that's what you get here. So these numbers here we see, these are your lot sizes, these are your lot sizes. And then the black number here in the middle, this is current lot size. So it means if you had to take this trade right now, you're taking at 1.99 lots. Minus five, minus one, plus one, plus five. These are all like, say, tools. Let me see, they're just tools that are just there to help you. Say, at the end, you want to add one to this current lot size. You may press the plus one, you'll be adding one lot to it. So you'll be having 2.99. So instead of having to go there, type and all of that, in case of speed, for instance, depending on your trading style again, you may need speed. So depending on the speed you are, you are, you need to, the, the speed you want to get that get into the other the quiz or this so they're useful and the stop loss and take profits well i explained that later on because so let's take note of that so in these same slides i will explain that so your fuel policy immediate or cancel so it means whatever you do now it's happening right now so that's just fuel policy that's how you order the fuel so it's not the fuel policy could be at a certain price maybe later on but then the fuel policy is just as right now, let's just close right now, or let's take the other right now. So that's what we're saying. So you have your two prices here. This is your bid, your ask prices. So if you're selling, you're going to be selling at this price. If you're buying, you're going to be buying at this price. So um, take note. So if you sell now, it means you're selling 1.99 lots of BTC USD. If you're buying, it means you're buying 1.99 lots of BTC USD. So your lot size is always important to check because. Sometimes you, in fact, your broker doesn't ask you for confirmation factory taking the street. So if you are, uh, let's say you're not, you're not thinking of it at the moment, you, are, you could actually get your broker puts this order 1.99 for you, and it's actually be filled, and well, you definitely be moving from that rate. So you actually have to check your size because you, are, you don't get to confirm. So the only confirmation is to ensure that. Before you place that trade, you are sure that you're using the right load size because on your hundred dollar accounts, you'd be surprised because of your leverage, your broker will allow you to buy as much as hundred thousand worth of whatever it is you're buying. So something to check out for. So um okay. Sorry, um, if you're having little issue with the audio, just let me know. Um, I think it's probably going to be a local problem. Maybe that's from your network. So you could just Try to disconnect and connect and see if it gets better. So just maybe disconnect and connect quickly and see if it gets better. Well, we recap, but we're not actually going into what we actually tend to do for today. So we need to pay just control it. Okay, so um, your trading style depends on your lifestyle, personality, profession. Trading style is how exactly you intend to get into the trading. How would it work for you? How do you think it will work for you? So those are things you're considering. Yeah? So your lifestyle, personality, and your profession. You see how this happens. Um, every trader is unique and to choose, choose a suitable trading stuff. Now, I may be a trader that is perfectly fine using $10,000 right now. My friend could not be that comfortable. So he doesn't really, he can't really take the you know, amount of risk out of the trading. So that's, important. that's why it's important for you to choose your specific trading style because you know, we're not equal, our capacities are not the same as that. So, okay, let me just, so your lifestyle. Well, there are people who are very, uh, there are a lot of people who are very, say, extravagant and all of that. They have a lot of money, these uh, are the things they are doing. So, based on how you know yourself personally, you know what you can, how you can do it, and all that personality. Well, you be emotional, you be an emotional kind of person, you could be a very serious kind of person, and all that. So, um, you have to be careful how you treat because it gets really emotional at some point. I do look at the psychology of building it down, and then it gets very emotional at some point. At some point, you, have, you feel like, just want to blow out the whole thing and everything. So if you don't consider all of this, you will be stuck in street places. So your profession, how you work, where you work. So imagine you are a um, what's a, a businessman. You probably have a lot of meetings in the daytime and all that. So you have to know where exactly would be best for you to take your positions. So that's one thing to 
phase your consideration on. So, okay, so these are the trading styles that we have. We have day traders, day trading or scalping. So they call day traders or scalpers as well. So the features of this, they avoid holding positions longer than a day or a session. What this means is that you don't see the day trader holding a position for two days, that's 24 hours. You don't see him holding a position sometimes for even up to a session that's maybe within eight hours between the London session, if he's trading in London session, or the between a few hours if he's trading the UK set, the sorry, the New York session. So sometimes they don't even hold trades for up to five minutes. So, so these traders are in and out as fast as possible. So they don't want to quickly get the profit out of the market and be out of the market. So the very high fast paced kind of trading. So it's not for everybody. So much higher volume traded due to the good time. So you're trading within a minute and you want to take as much profit out of that trade as somebody who is taking it. You definitely have to use a very high volume and you're putting yourself at so much risk because comparing one minute and 24 hours, that is so high. So you can imagine risking almost 100 times what somebody trading normally is risking. So, Often trade on lower time frames. They trade on 15 minutes, 30 minutes, five minutes, even one minute time frames based on what they're seeing. So they have strategies that they employ to do all of this. So they try with volatile markets. So the one market that are having huge moves, and the one market that are taking huge steps because they want to be in and out fast. So the silent market is not going to be very good for this trader. Once of the market that is very, very active, so it's going to kind of like you may be pick, pick a a position they are in and out very very fast so like reach that kind of speed in the market so you're taking care of it so although scalpers may be looking out for fundamental events not necessarily but then they may be looking out for fundamental events so like they are they may they may want to catch those kind of fast moves during news hours and all that but then they really analyze the fundamentals so they're more it's more like guessing at this kind of moment and then they're hoping that that happens. But then basically they're just technically limited. So they draw all the trains on the charts. So you see a lot of charts that looks very messy and all that. Those are technical analysts and they are yeah. so who does this fit fit people who are national strong now you risk losing so much. If I have 10k and I am happy I'm going to be happy to risk 10k um somebody who has just one k He's not going to have to risk it. So I would not advise him to trade the way I would trade. And you will sit down the same thing and pick the same position. So although you may kind of um, know why a lot of sizes do a little ratio and know how much you are risking. But then still, it may not be fine with you. So it's very, very risky. So um, being in an area of fast time connection, now you want to be in and out many minutes. So it means you don't want to waste a second taking that position. But the second matters. If you open your charts to the minute time frame, you see how fast it moves. So the second is very, very, very important. So you want to be in and out instantly. So it's for busy people. It may be for busy people, not necessarily. So if you're busy, you want to, I mean, you're having a nine to five job, or nine to six, nine to seven, eight, whatever, and you have one day in a day to kind of relax. Or you want to pick up your phone and be out. Just pick a trade within one minute and then rest for the rest of the day and go back to work the next day. So that's your routine. So you want to make sure that it works for you. So, well, well my guess. So it's a very risky trading style, extremely risky. It's, one of the, it's the most risky trading style, and you put yourself at so much risk, and your exposure is very massive. So, unless it is absolutely necessary, I will never advise this trading style. Although, Depends on your capacity as well. And it's also a very, very good place that brings you a lot of profits and a lot of losses because these traders see a lot of losses. But then just trading, you cannot, you cannot trade escape losses so that you ensure that things are going away most of the time. Yeah. Sorry guys for that disruption. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's move on. 
the next type of traders are the swing traders. So this is much more um, conservative kind of manages a lot of things. Right? So these people hold positions for hours or days or even weeks. So um, yeah, you take a position and you're waiting for it before you actually take your profits or you close the trades. So um, it's okay, but you have to be patient. So because because of time it takes less volume traded. So you're taking so much time to wait for your trades to actually yield however much you need. So you won't be trading as much as somebody who is trading for a minute to move. So it takes down your volume, your trading volume a much and then it's often they often trade on higher time frames, four hours, one hour, one day. I don't think they get to one week or one year. That's for a different kind of period. They try in more liquid markets. So they don't want markets that are very, very active, but they don't want markets. Sorry, they don't want markets that are very volatile. And volatile markets take huge steps. That's what it just means. So they take a huge step, very, very massive step. So as you mean, you're taking, you say, um, a brain and ant with a human being. Obviously, one step for me is not going to be the same ant. But then an ant may be moving faster, that's very rapid. But then it takes a long time before it gets so much. So like, that's what the liquid markets are. So it's actually active, but then it moves very gradually. And so you're taking little trades, little profits per people, something like that. So they try to touch the market and they also take that related. So um, this fits people with lower emotional strength. So if you are not so strong, so strong emotionally, this is perfect style for you. She's a bit, bit busy people too, because on Monday, you take a position and wait till. Friday, or you actually check or actually do any analysis. So, you know, free time, you do analysis and take it. But it may not also be good for busy people because they have to be there to check their trades. As, sorry, not check their trades, to check the analysis working out. So, you want to know has market got in here for you to take a certain action, this and that, and a lot of things involved like that. So, you want to be, you want to always be sure that the things are okay for you. So, it's less risky, so it's a more advisable kind of trading. But then everybody enjoys this. We want to be in and out as fast as possible. So we could um, set up for this stuff. So um, next we have is position traders. Position traders. Now these guys are very, very patient. I can't do this for them. These guys are very, very patient. These guys hold their trades for months, for years. Get this huge investments. Investments that to you very much, or you could invest into and wait for a long time. But then, this I would think traders that's forex traders on the meta trader platform actually do trades this way. But this is for much further investments like Bitcoin investments where you have to um, hold your trades for long, like that. But then, I think on your trading platform, people trade to actually do that. So, because of the time, it takes far less than you trade. So, and because of how long you are willing to wait, you don't even put so much on your hands, so you just put a little amount and then hopefully it turns out very massive because waiting for a year for something to do too much, if it doesn't give you that much, in a year, that was just a waste of mess. So if we trade on higher time frames, one day, one hour, one minute, one year, four years time frame. So what this means, by the way, when we say we will trade on this time frame, we're not saying take uh, I'm not saying um, how do I see it. I'm not saying I'm not saying they must be on this time frame to place the trade. What it just means is that when they do the analysis, they consider these time frames. So somebody trading on the 15 minutes time frame means that when he wants to do his analysis, he goes to the 15 minutes time frame to do his analysis. He may eventually take, he may eventually find an entry on a lower time frame, but then his basis or let's say your um, your insights. Or the view generally is on the 15 minutes time frame. So whatever you're seeing is what you're seeing on the 15 minutes time frame. So that's what we mean by taking trades on higher time. So these guys are fundamentally oriented. Yes, because you can't actually do any technical analysis to wait for one year before it happens. Whatever makes you hold a trade for years has to be something that you are sure is well probably good for the move. So it's more like fundamentally oriented. What this means, what we're saying here is that. The, the wait for or the lookout for economic events that are going to affect certain things. So people that invest in crypto, for instance, might have you know, perceived that um, the coronavirus pandemic was going to affect it however with the positive or oil or whatever it is. So for that, um, COVID, for instance, is a fundamental 
fundamental events. So based on that news, we are there to kind of just we expect this to happen. So they don't really do anything technically. We expect Bitcoin to rise because of just this particular news. And then they in and then they just invest in it. So those are position traders for you. Okay, so for extreme time frames, we have the these are the time frames we have for the forex trading. Let's quickly rush this so we can get into the after. So stop loss and take off the explain. So I explained it in the next course. So I'll explain later. So stop loss and take profit is the price at which you want the markets to take you out of the position if it's in a loss or in profit. So depending on how your trades are going, you want to manage these trades perfectly. So you need these tools. I'll explain them also. Okay, so um, well, this is what we looked at next. So let me quickly switch the screen now. But then if you have any questions, just drop your questions or ask your questions and I would try and answer them while we, while we go to the next um, lessons. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, if there are no questions, I would move on. Let me, let me, let me get into what we have for now, okay? Okay, so this all right, then I guess we're following. So let me get to what we have next. So this is this is just um, what would I see. This is um, basically just stock. So the inevitable part of trading, risk management, economic calendar, and calculating your profits and losses. Well, the inevitable part of trading, I wonder what that is. Well, then let's see what it is because. There are a lot of things you don't care about trading. You only see uh, money. Yeah, but then there's so much to it. So let's 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 see what we have there. So okay. So what's the energy part of trading? Let's find out. So um losses. Be just it. Losses. Now you cannot run away from this as a trader. Unless you are good or whatever it is, you can make just only you can profit from losses, sorry. This is something that has to be there. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> why exactly, how exactly do you now agree about this? Because nobody wants to make losses. We are not happy to make losses. We don't even want to see losses on our accounts. Well, what is it? What is it about this? Okay. So what is it um, about trading that's so exciting if you are going to make as much losses? Now you could even make much more losses than you make. So you could have much more losing trades than you have winning trades. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. So um, don't be deceived. You cannot eliminate losses in trading. It's impossible. You could feel lucky within your first few tries and be very consistent. If you will, you could be lucky, let's say, to have 10 straight wins, 20 straight wins, which is very rare. Even five straight wins is quite rare. But like, you're very lucky to see five straight wins in your trades or 10 straight wins in your trades. But then just wait for it. The loss is coming and it will always come. You can really run away from it. But then the thing is just, how would you manage these losses? So you have to ensure that you're not losing more than you're gaining or you are still consistent. So it's like moving up the ladder, well, then maybe take two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, one step back, four steps forward, two steps back. Eventually, you discover that you are still moving forward, but then you don't want to be taking two steps forward, three steps back, one step forward, five steps back. Just be so if you if you are going for trying far 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 lower than you actually will, so like 
it's important to actually look into this because a lot of people don't take this. So you see a lot of videos on YouTube and you are not really seeing the bad part of it. Everybody yeah, is susceptible to blowing an account. Very, very possible. Like imagine code is something that happens. It's quite when it happens, you really okay, you blame yourself to an extent, but then something that could happen. So like, we're just going to look into that. So and as a new trader, as a new, let me say new trader, yeah, you can't really skip that. So three losses are inevitable. What can we not do? Well, except in losses. So uh, you have to know that the loss is coming. And then when it comes, you have to be ready, okay. Tell yourself that you knew it was coming and you're ready for it. So now that it has come. Well, it's just it has just come to like you have to accept it. And when you lose, you don't give up. <laughs> because losses may come and it may come so big. They will come bigger than you you would have you that wanted or you that prepared. So like when you come, just go actually when you come look for a way forward, like why exactly do you use this and all that? So it's more or less a stepping stone can you say. So you see a loss is a stepping stone, except your losses. There's this saying they use they say um they say what they say expects. The was something you expect to so always expect. So for many of your trades, although you've analyzed it and you're perfectly almost 100 percent sure, see you're 95 percent sure, but then you should still expect it less. So like it's something that me me just come. So when it comes, you shouldn't be you shouldn't come as a shock. So that's just it. Okay, so the first step to recovery from losses is to accept your losses. Losses are a huge part of trading. And as a trader, you must try to avoid the negativity that comes with you. That's exactly what I just said. So you may feel you've lost now, and then well, this isn't just for me. But that's wrong because I mean a lot of people make a lot of money from trading. They lose a lot to whatever they make money. So you would look at how you make it in such a way that if you are losing, you won't don't lose up to. What you just gained. So as long as you traded and you just gained ten dollars, then you should be looking to lose nothing less than nothing more than five dollars. That's the way forward. So like you are going in a way to see that okay, as long as I stay in profit, that is good. Those are definitely coming, but then I'm still in profit. So how exactly am I going to stay in profit? Yeah. So that's what we're saying. Okay. So um, <laughs> okay. Um, now you ask yourself why you lost that trade. And there's a lot of reasons why you lost your there's a lot of reasons why you lost your trade. And yeah, we have Martin here, so he's going to be the in the town. So let me yes, we can just go through it. So there's a there's a lot of reasons why you lost your trade. It may be a bad strategy, maybe it may be a bad decision, it may be bad risk management, you did not take some things into consideration. I love that. So he asked you that. Ask yourself why exactly you lose that trade because it happens sometimes you lose your trades and it was meant to happen based on okay, the market doesn't believe it, which is fine. But then there's a time where you took a position based on emotion or you took a position based on a lot of things, or you decided not to just use a stop loss after you decided you decided you would not use a stop loss in your trade because you expect it to happen or something. Was something let's say something that it's your fault, not the market's fault. And you have to know exactly why you must stop it. So after taking a deep loss, the best strategy is to take a step back and answer a few questions. Why did I lose? Yeah, because your strategy may not just be working, but you just kept on trying and trying and trying, just wanting to just make sure that stuff works. And it's not meant to work. You know when to stop and look for a different way out. But then, so you have to ask yourself a lot of questions. So moving on. Um, be truthful to yourself. Yeah. All this means you might not be ready to start trading life. So you have to dig deeper and find out if you're ready to trade in life or not go back to basic. Now, there's nothing wrong with basic. It's better for you to lose 100k in the demo than to lose 100k in life. Now, you cannot, you cannot um, trade, you cannot trade life, you cannot trade life. Oh, sorry, you cannot trade a demo and be very consistent in the demo and you know, have to thing or two from the demo. So, like, if 
feeling like it's just not working out, then you know, should relax and keep trying to do them because that is that's that's actually where you start from. Although the demo doesn't really give you the ideal market conditions, like it doesn't really give you the amount of volatility you get on life. It won't give you a lot of like there's just a little different in the demo of life. But then there's 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 absolutely no much um, there's absolutely no much difference like that. Let me say. So like the demo and the live, uh, there's no difference in the movements. Let me say that's what I mean. But then you want to be trading in a way that you are taking us taking taking less risk. So you want to learn to trade on them. You don't want to be learning. You don't want to be a learner on the live accounts. You want to be a learner on the live accounts. Yeah, because of the psychological part of trading, it is it's actually better to learn on the live accounts psychologically. So it's not like it's ideally, but then psychologically, it's better to be learning on live account because trust me, you don't value a hundred KDM accounts as much as you value five hundred dollar live account. So the emotions that will be involved in trading both of them will be far different. So you want to ensure that so this goes. So okay. Um what's up with your psychology? And this is another thing to ask yourself, what's, what exactly happened there? Why did you panic, bro? Why did, why did you just get angry at me? Why did you just blow it? You just give up on the whole thing and say, well, one way or win or lose 50-50, let's just take it. Why exactly, what happened? So <laughs> pay attention to your reaction to certain market movements. You panic on the last trade or the emotions. Yeah, this is something everybody's guilty of. Even us as professionals, we are very guilty of this because like there's time where you feel and eh, this isn't just working. Why is it so bad? Why is it so bad? I mean, there's so much rush. Like, why? I, I just lost 50k. I have only 10k left. What's the point? Let me just gamble this whole thing and risk losing everything. Like, no, you actually have to because. As long as there's money in that account, there is always an opportunity to bounce back. So like, you must have money in that account. So it doesn't ensure that the money stays in that account. So don't come to, don't come to, don't come to like the um, point where you are willing to lose everything because just I mean, it's better you take out your thinking and go and relax or uh, take a vacation than to actually just risk. Do a 50 50 trade for any trade you have to take, you should have at least 25% assurance that it's going to work. So, 25% assurance that it's going to work at least, even if it was not going to be at least in 10 trades, you should have an 85% win, win percentage. So, that is that's important. So. Okay, so don't repeat, repeat the same mistake now. As human beings, it's important to learn from mistakes. So as an investor or a trader, you should know when something is not good. How for you to the same mistake? So um, you lost the trade because you did not use the stop loss, and then you took your next trade, and you lost it because you didn't use the stop loss, and then you took your next trade, next five trades, lost it because you didn't use the stop loss. That is just abnormal. Like it's not, it, it's not, it, it, it's not normal because you are actually you are you're seeing the reason why you're losing that trade. Well, then you may not and then you decide, no, I must keep going this way. Nah, it's a mistake you made, and then you must learn from that mistake. You know, you are never going to get out of that mess. You keep losing this trade, that's it. So like whatever it is that caused you to lose that particular trade, you must reconsider, you must check it know why exactly you lost that trade like that. So like um, so like that is okay. so um avoid repeating the same mistakes. So you've learned from your mistakes, don't do it again. That is the way to reduce your losses minimum maximally let's say. Okay so risk management. Um we talked about the inevitable part of trading. Now you are definitely going to be making so much losses from these trades. Yeah. But then this is a very this is the most important tool to ensure that you minimize the amount of yeah. you are making. Because you cannot be you cannot keep making so much losses and then 
your emotional. Obviously, well, emotional, your emotion is the most of it because losing your money is not interesting and is not appealing to you. So, like you are, so you are like, you have to find a way of not losing those trades. And then it's not only emotionally, you actually have to look at your strategies and a lot of things. So let's look at what you mean by risk management. So risk management refers to actions you take as a trader to protect you from the bad side of trading. High risk gives you more opportunities for bigger returns, as well as exposes you to much higher losses. Now, um, risk, there's the bad side of trading is what we've already said, the losses. That is the bad side of the losses. Now we don't, um, we don't want to be stuck in our trades. Yeah. You want to enter a trade and you have an exit plan. As you can see, what would I do if, I lose, if I'm losing $500 on this trade? What would I do if I'm losing $100? Or what would I do if I'm gaining $50,000 on this trade? So you have to have an exit plan. So you have to have an exit plan, yeah. So high risk gives you more opportunity for bigger returns as well as exposed to much higher losses. Now, if you took a position and that position gains you a profit of say fifty thousand dollars, you should have at the back of your mind that if any other thing had gone wrong, you would have lost that exact same fifty thousand dollars with the same amount of movement that you got on the trade, except for maybe spreads that difference of spreads and maybe commission. Like the same movement you know, that we that give you exact similar. So you ask yourself, um, when I took this change, yeah, if I had lost gone down this much, would I actually have been satisfied with it? Because you've seen yourself gained 50k profit. But then the amount of risk that was involved in that change would have been very, very scary. Because you imagine how would that be if you had gone the other way. So you put yourself in a position where on any take on any trade you take, if you have lost that trade, would you still be okay? So you want to be in a situation where you are okay with any loss that you want to take. So you don't put yourself in harm's way of blowing the account or having a margin call. So you want to ensure that that difference is the same way. Yeah, so it's more like it. You're giving yourself more, you know, is you're you're emotionally training yourself to kind of prepare yourself for say losses. Well then in ideally you don't want your chances to be 50 50. You want to give yourself a 90% chance of winning that trade. Well then emotionally best you can actually do is 50 50. Ask yourself what you tell yourself that okay if I'm going to lose if I'm going to lose 50k on this trade would that be okay losing 50k on this trade. So, important to me. So let's look at the tools here. So the basis of a good risk management. The basis of a good risk management. So what are the odds? So as a trader, you should know the odds of, you, of your trade being successful. You don't want to be taking a trade with the odds against you. If you're not sure of your trade, don't take it. What we're saying here is, assuming you want to take a sell on Euro USD or you want to take a sell on gold, or you want to take a sell on gold, now, to you now, um, thinking about it now, not technically or fundamentally, but then based on what you have analyzed and everything, how sure are you that this will work? And you don't want to be putting your money in the wrong basket. Okay? You don't want to put your own money in the wrong investment. You should. You would never intentionally actually put your money in the wrong investment. So you actually ask yourself, um, what are the odds of this trade, trade being successful? If the odds are against you, it means you are not even sure of that position you're about to take. So why take it? Unless you are just there or you're just about to gamble on that trade, but then you're actually not sure of that position going perfectly. So why exactly are you going to take that position? So you should try as much as possible to avoid trades with the odds against you and ensure that you are almost 90% sure of any position before you actually take that position. We don't want to be stuck in the market as I've, I kept, I keep ringing. So we're trying not to be stuck in the market. So you take a position that is against, in fact, there are positions where, there are times where you take positions that the moment you feel that order, the market never comes back to you. It just goes against you from day one. So what exactly, why, what, what do I do now? That things are just not going the right way. So it happens, it happens. Like there are times where you're losing and then you're actually, meant to lose that trade. 
what I mean by your means to uh, you never okay to use, but there are times where your analysis of your pinpoints, your strategy is working and everything, but then it just happens that you lose that trade and it's very, very normal. So you know, okay, I've lost this trade, I'll win the next two trades, I'll win the next few trades, but then it just happens. So. Okay, so what's your capacity? As a trader, you should ask yourself, how much am I willing to lose and can I afford to lose that? Uh, you may have $500 in your account, but trust me, you don't want to be losing, you don't want to be risking $500 on a trade. In fact, you don't want to lose $500. If anything, you're not even willing to lose $100 out of that account. But then you just have to put $500, you, just, you probably just put $500 in your account to kind of give your account a buffer or to boost your buying power. Kind of, so it's like you put. I put five hundred thousand, five hundred five five hundred thousand. Let me say, sorry, I put five thousand dollars in my account now. I am not willing to risk even up to one thousand dollars. But the reason why I put five thousand dollars in my account is to give me a buffer, to give me a boost in buying power. Yeah, so I have five thousand dollars in my account with leverage that gives me a huge chunk of buying power. And then okay, no problem. Now I have buying power. And let me risk hundred dollars on the next trade. Or let me risk two hundred dollars on the next trade. But then, can't have five thousand dollars in your account and be risking two thousand dollars. You, you, you are, you are, you're basically gambling. Yeah, because you can't be risking everything. It means if you had to take three trades, you would have risked six thousand dollars. So it means if anything had gone wrong, you would have put yourself in a position where you would have lost six thousand dollars. Very bad. So like, you should know how much you're willing to lose and can you afford to now for a swing for a um sorry for a scalper or a day trader remember what we spoke about earlier these people are very ready to lose any amount of money they put five thousand dollars in their account and they're ready to lose five thousand dollars now i used to be okay i used to be a fundamental trader so as a fundamental trader it was basically scalping so we just scalp based on use events and then what we do is we put we deposit money we are going to risk. So what we do is that when we put money into the account, we are ready to use all that money for one particular thing. Now it's a trading style because we use we 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 um we take advantage of the volatility in the market at that time because NFP was yesterday. If you were to go back to your charts, if you look at your charts yesterday, you have noticed the movements in within that one minute. So NFP is released by 1:30 p.m. In the US, I'm oh, sorry, 8 30 a.m. in the US, which is about 1 30 p.m. here for me and spending your time. So the NFP is released, and then within that, within that, within that minutes, there is so much movement. In fact, within that minute, you see a movement that would be more than a movement that would have happened in one whole day. So, like that's how volatile it is. So as is as 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 a scalper, I did trade that I was fundamental because I traded just fundamental. Now, what we do is just when we see those moves, we risk everything on that trade because we want it in and out within that one minute. So we risk everything on that trade. So that was the trading style, or let me say it was the strategy that I used then. But then it was very, very risky. I could put up to $2,000 in my account and risk equal to $2,000 because I can afford to risk, lose that $2,000. So somebody else may not be able to lose that. So he cannot come and kind of want to copy my same style. So, that is that is down this. So moving on, so position position sizing. So choose a suitable lot size as this massively impacts your trades and exposes you to some level of risk. And you want to ensure that you are not overexposed in the market. What I mean by this is that you want to be sure that the worst case scenario is not so bad. So you want to ensure that your 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 worst case scenario is kind of is kind of okay. So let me say I have a five thousand dollar account and I placed the trade. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is me losing um five hundred dollars. I think I am good with that. So I am going to use five hundred dollars on this account. Now you decided okay, I want to lose five hundred dollars on this account. Now the size of your position would actually determine how fast you lose that five hundred dollars in your account. So if your lot sizes are very high, you will lose that five hundred dollars faster than you would have lost with a much lower lot size. 
So you want to ensure that the lot size gives you enough room in the market. Because if I use one standard lot to trade, I'll be looking for a situation where one step in the market, if I use one standard lot, one step in the market could be giving me about $10 profit. Now, as you mean, I want to risk, um, as you mean, I want to risk, um, say, what's five fifty dollars for instance it means with the one standard lot the moment the market takes five steps i am going to be out of that trade now i want to give myself an opportunity where i allow the market to take 100 steps before i actually lose that fifty dollars so you want to ensure that your position sizes are very normal and you don't over risk over leverage so we, i think we won't put out a a calendar kind of the charts that was going to um, that was going to kind of help guide guide you when choosing your position sizes because you want to ensure that you risk we, we determine our risk percentages and stuff like that. So we would explain that for a minute. So let's explain lot size. So lot size is the unit of the currency you are willing to buy or you are you want to buy. So now lot size could mean, for instance, if you want to buy one car, one is your lot size. If you want to buy two cars, two is your lot size. So that's the quantity of that car you're buying. So in the market, the lot size is the quantity of the currency you're buying. So I hope that is clear. So that's basically it. Okay, so stop losses and take profits. Instead of explaining this. So you should ensure that you limit the amount you could potentially lose on the position by using the stop loss and do through your profits. So um, what I'm saying here is that you should ensure that there is a limit to how much you can lose. Now, you are not going to be there when it, when, when it unfolds. You won't be there watching the market while things unfold for you. Like You're not going to be there when your the market is going down or the market is shooting down or whatever is happening. You may be at work, you may be at wherever. So you want to ensure that there is something that is going to stop that trade from getting that far down. Because it's not possible for you to be manually closing all of these other times. So you want to ensure that... Something, 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 something is there to stop the trade from going down. So that's the essence of stop losses. And then you take profit for market is very dynamic, it moves very fast, and things change within a split second. So you want to ensure that you've taken the most out of that trade as soon as possible before things turn around. Because sometimes holding trades for too long may see you getting in and out of profit as fast as you can even imagine. So like you have to ensure that you take your opportunities swiftly. So I'll explain stop losses and take profits. Okay, so the stop loss is the price at which you want the market to take you out of a position if it is in a loss or profits. That's either the stop loss or take profits. So I'll explain what this is. So now um, this is a typical market condition. Okay, so we're having this chart. So this is this is our chart. So this is just a portion of the charts. This is just the portion of the charts. So I got this from my desktop platform. So you could actually trade on your desktop or on your um, PC. So you could get the trading terminals from your PCs. But then again, something about the PC platform is that if you want to trade with KOT, for instance, you must get the trading platform. Okay. So it's not it's not one general you know, terminal for everything, unlike the mobile. So this is a pair, I think this is GBP USD or something. I'm forgetting what this was. So now taking this trade now like this. Now this market is very dynamic. What, what I mean is that the movements can uh, they but there's in an uptrend, for instance, where that's when the market is moving up, you can see a situation where it actually comes back down into losses and then the movements and all that. So I'm to ensure that there's something stopping now. Let me explain what I mean by the stop loss and people. Now, you know that to profit from a sell position, as you mean I took a sell from here, the only way I would be profitable in this trade is if the price was to come back down this way. It's what I've explained. So if you did not understand that, you could ask or check the previous causes. So the only way you could actually profit from the trade is the market comes down this way. Same thing with the buy. As you mean I took a buy from, I took a buy from somewhere here. What I want is market for markets to come this way. If market goes any other way, below or below here, I am going to be in a loss. So now let me explain what the stop loss does for you. So you have a trade and you took your position at you took your position at 
OS, okay, assuming you took your position at this point, let's assume this had not occurred. Let's assume this is where the market is now. Sorry. Let me pull this Sorry. Okay. Let's assume this had not happened. So let's say we've not yet seen the future and we're here. And then you took this position. You took this position here. Sorry. And then you took this position here, where this is exactly where the market is. Now you took a sell at this point. You took a sell at this point. It means that for it to be profitable, for it to be in profit, is going for this. Okay, so for it to be in profit, it means price went down this way. Yeah. And then if things were not going away, it means price continued this way. So what this means is that the market went, the market came down here and then it went up. So the fluctuation that you're looking at, all the fluctuations you're looking at, they happened like this. So all the movements, everything, everything. So it eventually went up. All the movements and everything eventually went down. So you want to be sure that, okay, as you took the trade here, as you took the trade here, you took the position here. Yeah, we are assuming this had not occurred. So you took the position here. You want to be sure that if in case something was to happen in the market, now it could happen, based on economic events, or it could happen based on your wrong analysis or something. The economic events, I think, you will not come through. So assuming this happened here, so you want a situation where if price gets to this point, you want your broker to automatically take you out of the street. So you don't want to be stuck in the street because you could imagine, assuming here was to be losing $500, you don't want to lose $500 from here. So you want to your broker to take you out of the street here. So now the price at this point will be your stop loss. So when you modify your orders, you would edit your stop losses from here. So whatever the price is here, it's going to be your stop loss. What this means is that you are going to be taken out of the street if for any reason price was to continue and get to this point. So the the, the advantage of this is that now there, there, are, there are moves that there, there are a lot of moves in the market that are based on momentum. So what this means is that there's something pushing it. Let me say it's like throwing the ball, yeah, the ball may not stop till it gets out, loses the energy within it. So now you could have a market where it just kind of catapults, so it just busts through this point. Now you could see yourself losing much more than you actually wanted to lose. So you don't want a situation where you are going offline and you don't have a stop loss in the trade. And you should always have a stop loss in the trade, even if it's going to be a bit far, but then just always have a stop loss because you can't actually see what's going to happen before it happens. And the same thing with the take profits, just that take profits is going to be in profit. So definitely you are in a sell position here. So your profit is going to be downwards this way. If you're in a buy, it's a bit the other way down. So you want to be in profit. You you want a situation where if market gets down here, you want to take you out in the profit. Now let's just see an example here. Let me clear this, getting messy. So let's just see an example. Now, as you mean, you took the sell at this point now. It means that when price goes here, you win quite a lot of profit. But you notice that price went back up to this point and then came back and met you at the same position where you entered that trade. Now, if I was to keep looking at this particular chart, wherever it stopped, there's a very high chance that it kept going this way. Because based on the analysis we have here, there's a very high chance that it just kept going this way. So now, if you did not have a take profit here, you would not have taken that profit there and then you would still end up somewhere here, which might be a loss. And then sometimes you would have lost that take profit and then eventually price just gets back to this point. So that is poor risk management. So you want to ensure that you have a system that is going to um, get you in and out of trades efficiently. So um, it's very important because um, we're going to, eventually when we get into technical analysis, we'll look at where exactly at the best positions per trip that you take, you're exactly at the best positions to um, get to set your um, stops and your take profits. So, yes, quickly get through this. Okay, so um, leverage. Yes, this is an, another tool in risk management. Now, leverage impacts the losses. Trading with excessive leverage increases your exposure in the markets and in turn exposes you to much larger losses. Now, leverage is basically 
a multiplier. The image is basically a multiplier. So it kind of, it kind of, it kind of um, multiplies your actual deposit in the account. So you're having an account balance with $100, for instance. Yeah. Now we leverage. Okay, so let's say you're having an account with $100, for instance. Yeah, this is actually where you deposited. Now with the leverage of one to 500, for instance, what this means is that this leverage multiplies your account balance by 500. This leverage multiplies your account balance by 500. So it means that I, in buying power, you'd be having a buying power with about what's five fifty thousand dollars with just hundred dollars in your account. Now this 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 potentially exposes you to a lot of risk because you are going to be losing, you are going to be trading like you actually deposited fifty thousand dollars in your account. So like there's so much involved, you're know, risking a lot on this trade. So like that is that is that is that's that this this gives you this, this kind of gives you an opportunity to risk more than you should be able to risk because two thousand dollars compared to hundred dollars that's like that's a, that's a lot that's a lot but like a brokers brokers in the US there are a lot a lot of brokers in the US give leverage of just one to two and leverage is very important because you cannot actually afford the full cost of this trade now you want to take a trade with fifty thousand dollars buying power. You, you cannot actually, you may not even be able to afford $25,000. So uh, the leverage is actually very, very important. But then you have to ensure that you do bad leverage. Now it's called over leveraging. When you risk, based on your leverage, you risk so much more than you should risk. So now with a $100 account, a leverage of one to 200 is fine. A leverage of one to 100, in fact, is actually fine. Because leverage gives you, it kind of gives you a scene so if you increase your leverage, you take your scene higher, and then you will jump to a point where you cannot actually reach. So like you are going to be overexposed in your trade. So your leverage is very important then because well, as not, the same way it gives you more room or more opportunities to take your positions. It also kind of gives you a scene, like kind of um, gives you a barrier, let me say, to how much further you can do it in your trade. So, um, Yes, so let's move on. Okay, so control your emotions. Now, this is this is emotions is the most is the most important part of trading. Let me say. Now, aside your analysis and everything, you could have a very perfect analysis, but then because of your emotions, you lose every single trade you find yourself in. So emotion is very important because psychologically, psychologically, it is impossible for you not to be attached to your money. So like your money, it's your money. You can't, you can't just put your money in the market and just be willing to throw it away. So as little as $1 that you lose, you will be very sad about it. So emotions are very, very crucial in trading. So I don't let your emotions get the better of you. Being too emotional exposes you to more risk, more risk in the market. Now, very self-explanatory. You don't want to be putting yourself in a position where you just want to gamble. Um, you very, get very emotional. You've lost $50,000, for instance. You have a little $50,000 left. And then you feel, what's the point? I've lost $50,000. I mean, I'll just gamble with it. And then hopefully it works out. I'll be a millionaire. And then you just throw out everything based on your emotions. Now, that's very, very bad trading. So that you just have to keep your emotions in check. Now, what do we have next? So. Let me just quickly go through the economic calendar. So time is gone. So the economic calendar is scheduled date of significant news releases and events that guide your activities in the market. Now the economic calendar is used for is used by traders because a lot of things impact your trading. A lot of things affect your trading. So like you have news events that affect your trading and all of that. So this affects the market. You don't have to be a fundamental trader to know exactly. Oh, sorry, you don't have to be a fundamental trader to pay attention to the economic calendar because even as a technical trader, economic events must affect you. So you cannot trade on any point. So you need the economic calendar to know when exactly and at what time would a certain news event be released. In a week, you could have up to 10 news events that will impact the market massively. So now if you're not paying attention to those events, you are not going to be, you are going to be caught on um unprepared. So you want to be prepared for every economic event. So it's part of trading. You have to be sure that okay, within this certain within 
this time, nothing is going to affect this matrix. And if at all, there's going to be something to affect matrix, at least you want to have measures in place to manage those positions. So, okay, so the economic calendar shows events of different effects on traders. So you could see events that impact the market mildly to events that have very high impact impact of the market. So now it's, 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 it's a calendar that shows you economic events generally, but then there are still some events that affect the market more than some others. So you don't want to, you, if, if, if every event was to affect the markets massively, then we will not have time to actually have a very uh, conducive environment to create. So it's just a few events that actually affect the market. But then later on, it goes, we we'll actually break down as we, I think there's a chapter where we break down the whole, most of the major events and why exactly the most markets are moving. So um, this is an example of the economic calendar. Now the most popular economic calendar is, is on forexfactory.com. This is the popular calendar we use. So now, if you look at this calendar now, you see that some, they, they have different colors showing here. Yeah? Now each of these colors, the, the, each of these colors signify how important or how, let me see, how massive this event is going to be. Now, you would see, for instance, now you have this, 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 this is red, this is deep red. This is the highest you could get to. So now these are very, very important events. If you do not watch out for them, they will destroy you in the market. So this means that by 10 a.m., now you could set it to your local time. So by 10 a.m., this is going to be, this is, in US, in the year for the US dollar, there's going to be a news that's going to affect the US dollar. So I should be, I should ensure that there's something in place for me by 10 a.m. to ensure that this doesn't affect me. Or by 8.15 a.m., this is probably going to happen. Now, these are the very, very high impact news. Now you can see a little, a little, a milder um, red color, the orange or something. And this is not as, as powerful or as uh, massive as these other ones, but then they are they could. So it's just like saying they could affect the market. But they don't oftentimes they don't, except if the news is just I don't know that day is just but well, you can't actually guess what going to happen. So like now the, the other ones here are these ones. Now this just means they might but then like they never don't they never do like all my years of training, I've never really seen this news affect the market. So, like the only thing we actually consider most times is the ones that are in deep red, and maybe sometimes these other ones. But then you actually know the ones that are actually going to move the market. But not every to move the market. So now we have this. Um, so we have this. So these are these are those details for each of those events. So they're very important in knowing how the market is going to react to some movement. Because if, for instance, now there's a news that says my, your country's exchange rate is going to, sorry, your country's interest rate is going to skyrocket today. Now, you know that's quite bad for uh, businesses in your country and you can actually imagine how it will affect your country's uh, currencies and exchange rates. So like that's how you apply most of all of these events to your daily trading and all of that. But some of these events now, the way they look now, you're seeing 8.15 a.m. 8.15 a.m. on the dots, you actually see the movement. So it doesn't actually delay for you because 8.15 a.m. on the dots, the outcome of the news is published at that time. So like immediately you see this, you are in for it. So like that minute that it enters. So 8.15, 8.14, 59 seconds, 8.14, 8.15, zero seconds. There is a huge move in the market. So you don't actually have time to think about it. So you have to be prepared for it. So, okay. All right. So this is an example of what a news event is now. So this pair, I think this pair is GBP USD. I don't know why they put it here. I think this pair is GBP USD. So this was a news event sometime in August, I think. Yeah, so this is the non farm period, a very popular news event, and one of the most, one of the most massive, let me say that, that is a very massive event. This is one of the biggest news releases in the world. Yeah, they move the markets massively. So this was, this, 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 this here is 
how this this was the impact of the markets at that moment. Now it may look small, it may look small, but if you look at the chart, if you check yesterday's news release, because there was also the same set of news yesterday. So if you check this news release yesterday, it was a very huge move. Then at exactly 1:30 p.m., I think this this was the 1:30 p.m. candle. At that time, exactly the move began. So like it just and then somehow the momentum most times continues because of how massive the event is. So the market doesn't relieve itself of the impact immediately. So sometimes the impact may last for up to a month or up to two weeks or a whole week. So like it may be good sometimes, it may not be good sometimes, but you can never know what's going to happen in the news because the news that was just released yesterday was very, very different from what was actually expected. That was a very massive difference. So this is a very, very important tool for us as traders. So, um, okay. So we've gotten to the end of our session today. Yeah, so um, next session, okay. I think we've looked at most of this, but then it's be part of it. But then this is the end of chapter one of our trading workshop. So we're looking at chapter two, the next two weeks, we're looking at the mechanics of trading. So it gets much more complicated. So while attending, you should have your pens, your virus, your papers and everything ready because it's going to be quite intense. So I said we had good news, but then I think Martin is itching to share the news. So I would give him the mic now. So I'll give him the floor to have his word. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, just drop them. After he's done what he's saying, I would answer your questions. Yeah. So Martin, over to you. Martin, we're waiting for you. Yeah. Yo, allow me to share my screen so I can share my screen. You're hearing me, right? Can, can everyone see my screen? If you, if you can actually see my screen, can you just send me a thumbs up, please? So I can know if you're seeing it or not. Okay, then cool. All right, so 
just so I'm, I'm just gonna go over some few basic like nothing like difficult like things that I know that most of you probably understand or don't understand. But before we start, is there any question you, any one of you wanna ask? So we're gonna give them the opportunity to, to um, unmute yourself if they wanna ask any questions so I can answer them up or whatever. All right, so every, I think everyone is mute, so everyone needs to um, be unmute. So, All right, so if you guys unmute your call yourself, I think you should be able to unmute it yourself. All right, so, so you see someone just unmute yourself there. So, is there any questions before we move on? So, <clears throat> if there's any questions, pop them now before I start. Uh, all right, well, I guess there's no question because nobody wanna ask anything. All right, so what I'm, what I'm just gonna go over today just The best time frame to draw the chart. All right, so best time frame to draw a chart. So it's daily and four hourly. You can see this is a four hourly time frame now. So what I want to say again, and I will always mention, is that stop doing technical analysis on hourly time frame. So technical analysis here. Let me show you something about a one hourly time frame. I'm just going to show you, right? So you see this right here is actually a four hour time frame, right? So if you, if you look on this, let me just remove some stuff from the screen. So let me just switch up this. All right. So <laughs> if you look at this time frame that I'm actually on, yeah. sharing. So sharing your screen should be this one. All right. So let me share this one. All right. Sorry. So if you look, if you look at my screen right now, I'm actually in a four hourly time frame, right? So I'm gonna move this to an hourly time frame, right? So let's just move back to an hourly time frame. Mm -hmm. So Picture this, you. This, 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 this. Can you um, keep the background noise down for me, please? So right. So picture you doing technical analysis on an hourly time frame, right? All this is just selling off. Look at that. That's just a that's just an impulse move towards the downside, right? So. That's just selling off. Picture you doing your analysis on this, right? That, that's no clear chart. So I can go like this and mark up this. I can, there's nothing there interesting in this time frame. You know what I mean? So look at that. If you draw your support and resistance channel line, that doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? The market. So when doing your technical analysis, right, you need to look for setups on the higher time frame. So why I normally walk off, I normally walk off my weekly, on my hourly time frame. You know what I mean? So I work for my weekly. As you can see, I have a weekly support trend line right there drawn on GBP NZD. <clears throat> right? So I work off my weekly here and I look for more setups. So I, I just use basic market structure. So like support resistance here. Yeah? It's just the same like supply and demand. So I use just basic market structure. So when doing technical analysis, I work from my weekly back down towards my hourly time frame. Hourly time frame is when I actually looking for entries. Right, so <clears throat> when working, right, when actually working on my um, when I'm actually doing my technical analysis, I work from a weekly back down to daily, right? So that's that's me now. Move on to my daily, right? I already know, yeah, because I already know this is my weekly support here. Yeah? So let me just highlight my weekly support trend line. Simple as that. So I put it in red. So I already know that zone. If the market to reach back to that zone. That's my weekly support. So if price reach back to that zone, then eventually me as a technical trader, I'm actually gonna look for some sort of reaction, either buy or sell opportunity. It all depends on what you as a technical trader see, how the market actually 
react to all these zones. So what price action is doing, you know what I mean? So that's what you need to use on your time frame to do technical analysis because doing an hourly time frame here, you could have all that selling off pressure. You as a trader, you could have been looking for buying. Guess what you're going to be looking for buy because the market is actually selling off here. And then when you look for sell, look at this. Yeah, this is the time frame. You can see how many days of selling off we got. We got so many days of selling off here. That's like probably like what? two weeks or one week or a week and some, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> you can do technical analysis on hourly time frame. And I always say, especially new traders, they always look at five minutes. I see 90% of traders I see using five minute time frame. Like that's the worst time frame you can actually use to trade. You know what I mean? People use, and to be honest, I laugh because it's funny to me because you will, you will say to them, you'll be, Leo, you can't do technical analysis on a, five minute time frame you can't trade on a five minute time frame five minute 15 minute and 30 minute time frame they are for scalping and entry points that's what i use them for but as a professional trader you need to master the basics before you can move on to these other time frames so like for you guys that's just beginners i would always advise to look for entries on hourly possibly you can move to the 30 minute or 15 minutes sometimes it all depends on where you are you know what I mean? So like, I won't advise you to go there, but I said hourly time frame is the best entry as technical traders. You know what I mean? Because you're not going to see any clear chart. You need to understand what price action is doing. You know what I mean? So that's why you need to look at the higher time frame. So it's just simple as that I use. That's how I actually do all my um, technical analysis, right? So after my daily, I work for my daily towards my four hourly time frame, right? So let me just show you guys something as well. So on the daily, yeah, I draw my support and resistance channel. So this is what the trader actually was in is GBP NZD. So let me just move back to my daily, sorry. All right, so you can see GBP NZD yeah, show us this head and shoulder pattern here. Yeah? I think it was on the weekly as well. Yeah, so I'm just gonna show you guys. So you can see where price came along. Sorry, um, let me just, sorry about that, let me just show. You can see where price had this selling off here, came back down to our weekly support here. And what happened? Price actually rejected the bottom there, yeah? So on my daily, yeah, I see price created that double bottom here. So all this was technical analysis done from a few months ago. So if you guys go back to your trading view, there's been times when I've sent this there. I think this was all up last year, late last year, sorry, December. So there was times when I actually saw this trend changing because look, when I saw the trend changing, is because look, we had all this selling off. Look at that spike now. Price came back down, went back down, went down, created that double top, double bottom here. And now, as a technical trader, seeing that double bottom here, especially on a weekly time frame, double bottom here, I was actually looking for some sort of change in the market trend. And you can see on the daily, it's actually showing up clear. So you can see straight away, price came back down, respected that same level of support twice, and then look what happened, went up. Yeah, came back on again, made a triple bottom, and then watch it went up again. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> now I've been drawing my day, I've been drawing my support and resistance channel. You know, so let me just zoom in my chart for you guys now. Yeah. So if you look at this, yeah, it's just basic. So we are currently working off this structure of the market. Yeah. Ideally, you use a history, use a historical part of the market to like look for take profits and where you can add your stop losses. Yeah. So if you look at this here, just support, you got your support trend line there and you got your resistance. Remember, you're catering for the best touches as possible when you draw your support and resistance trend line. So don't mind looking at this here and be like, yo, look at all these wicks here. These are just wicks rejection, you know what I mean? And I'm sure these wicks guarantee they probably test some previous support or resistance here in the past. Why see price react that way for it react there? So you can see we was in this option. Yeah, creating higher highs and higher lows, yeah. What happened now, what I've seen is that price actually break this level of support, came down, retest, yeah. You see this one bullish candle right there, which is my black candle, yeah. So that bullish candle, yeah, is actually a retest. So this is how you actually move to five minute time frame, which I'm not gonna go to because it's just gonna confuse you. So you guys need to understand the basic. So this week that you're actually seeing, where I just highlight there, this wick and not black candle is actually candle sticks on the five minute time frame, but I'm not gonna go into it because I don't want you to get confused. So I already seen that retest and look what happened after that retest. Price came up, retest this level of support here become 
some sort of resistance, yeah, and then what happened? We had that move towards the downside. Where we can see price now is that price is actually at a level of support. For me, as a technical trader, this retest right there is not actually what I want to see. That's not good correction for me because the market doesn't just go straight down or straight up. You know what I mean? So I want to see some sort of correction within the market. You can see right there, we had a bullish engulfing, and that would have catch a lot of novice traders, as aggressive traders. You would have just caught them to just dive in the market and start buying after they see that bullish engulfing close on the four hourly. That's why you need to wait for price to actually confirm to you that it's going to go up. So that's why I look for formation like this. So I look for price to go up, pull back, yeah, retest, yeah, and then start continuing and creating higher highs. So say, for example, this is all the selling off that we get. So like how we have all this selling off here. For me to confirm that price is going to move back up here, yeah, I want to see price come like that. Retest that support, made a push towards the upside, pull back, yeah. If price pull back and I see price don't break past this level of support, then I'm gonna look for price to start creating higher highs and higher lows towards back the upside, yeah. But for now, on GBP and NZD, what I can actually see, yeah, let me just remove some of these charts here. Yeah? I wanna see some sort of correction, I'm being honest here. Yeah? So like this on my four hourly time frame, I wanna see some sort of correction. This is not a correction for me, you know what I mean? Because if you look at this market right now, you can see price actually broke out of our four hourly trend line right there. So you can see price break out there, but there is no deep correction. You know what I mean? Look at all this. It's like two hours of buying, one hour of buying, then you got all that four hours of selling. You know what I mean? So like it's just a mixture between buyers, but overall sellers actually win the fight in this market there because you can see what happened. Price actually went straight down. So now we are coming into that support around 193, 193, 248 then I'll look for some sort of buying opportunity now for price. But before I dive into that, I don't want to just go to the market here and just say, right, right I'm just going to look for the buy. I mean, I want to see a break and retest conforming higher highs and higher low formation before I actually enter the market. Does that make sense to some of you or is it still confusing? So like this, I want to see some sort of reaction. I want to see price move back towards the upside. So if I see price actually move back up, retrace this level, if price actually move back up and reject this level, again, as a technical trader, I will look for some sort of selling reaction when price actually move up to this zone because that can actually be the confirmation here for price to actually continue bearish where you can actually pull, you can get support, yeah, and then you can possibly pull a level of resistance where you can see price start forming that bearish structure of lower lows and lower highs. So you can see price actually move back within that zone and start creating lower lows and lower high formation towards the downside. You know what I mean? So that's why it's good to pay close attention to the market structure here yeah, and the setups of the market. So instead of just trying to go to the market doing technical analysis on hourly and four hourly time frame. So that's what I actually go about. Simple as that. You know what I mean? So simple, simple like that is what I actually go about doing technical analysis on these time frames and all that. So that's just it, yeah. If is, is there any questions or is there anything hard there for you to understand? You know what I mean? So if there's anything hard, just let me know. But I think everyone is happy because no one is unmuting their mic. So yeah, bro, that's cool. Um what what I wanna say is that in a few hours, probably in the next four to five hours, I'll be launching. The academy. So, what will be happening? I'll tell you. Let me just read some of the stuff for you. I like your accent, man. Thank you, bro. So, let me just read some stuff out for you now. So, I will be launching the academy, right? So, the academy is basically this, right? There will be, there will be all sort of courses teaching you, building you up from basics. So, there will be the introduction of the forex market. So, there will be price. Yeah, price expression, technical analysis, et cetera, et cetera. That will build you up from the basics where you need to be as a technical trader. There will be two packages, right? So but the first one will be mentoring, which is I will be teaching you guys live on this platform, Zoom calls. There will be one-on-one -on -one session. I will show you how to set up your MetaTrader for like mines, right? I'll give you everything, all the tools that I'm using. I don't use indicators. You can see I have a chart right there. 
and it said zero indicator. However, I use certain move, certain indicators to, to give me further conforming factors of price and what, how I can look for entry points, you know what I mean? But I don't always use them. As you can see, they're always off because I'm not interested in them. You know what I mean? So I just use price action and what I'm actually seeing in the market to actually trade. <clears throat> the courses will develop you as a beginner trader, no matter if you have experience here, because I know I'll be showing you a lot of stuff that you don't actually see and you actually know enough. You know what I mean? And I will be calling live trades in that. So let me just read out the stuff for you now. Um, right, so the first one will be online courses slash mentoring, which will be from myself. You will get lifetime mentorship. So every weekend, so say for example, you're struggling with something now, you can just drop me a message and I'll just pop a Zoom call for you directly and me and you will go through some stuff, what you're struggling with. You got Telegram support group, 24 hours support here. You, I will always be in that group. In that group, what I want you to do, once you enroll in the course, do your technical analysis, draw your charts up there, send it back to me. What I always say to traders here, if you like the way how I do my technical analysis, just go to trading, go to trading view or visit the telegram, go back to your charts on trading view or wherever you do your technical analysis. Ideally, I know most of you, <clears throat> I know most of you might actually go and use trading view. However, that will be the best option I can see, right? So if you're using that, I will go through trading view. If you want it to be looking like mine, you can have it looking like mine, even though I have some ugly candlesticks, doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's all about the skill. Yeah, what I always tell people, don't try to over trade here, yeah? invest in knowledge. That's the best thing you can actually get because looking at the candlesticks now, yes, you can see candlesticks, but when you're gonna enter the trade, and I know a lot of you are struggling with entry points, which is the easiest way. I think entry point is one of the easiest things that I've mastered over a period of time because I used to struggle with myself. You know what I mean? But over the years, I've been getting better and better and better every single day because I put time in. And what I want to say, take notes. You know what I mean? Like, even though I have so many experience, you know what I mean? I take fucking notes. I, I, I have my book right here where I actually write. Like, if I don't understand something, look, you can see. I actually write it down inside of this book. You know what I mean? Like, I write on stuff still. And I have my book where I, where I write notes in. And I have an orange book. It's full of notes. You know what I mean? So... Just study, study, study. And eventually, you're going to get there. You know what I mean? So that will be one of the options on the course. So you're going to get past and future webinars like this. And you're going to get trading plan, right? I'm going to discuss a trading plan with you. So what you want from trading, you know what I mean? I'm going to discuss a trading plan for you as an individual throughout a live Zoom lesson, yeah? There will be live trades call, like how I sent live trades on my free Telegram group, which I don't really normally do, you know what I mean? But I'll be start doing it. You know what I mean? I'm going to do it towards my students, you know what I mean? So I'll be calling live trades for you guys. I'll show you where I'm going to enter. I'm going to show you exactly where I'm going to put my stop loss and where I'm going to put my take profits. And if I'm looking for a continuation, either towards the upside or towards the downside, how? I will scale in and how I will scale out and what I will look for, etc. There will be one-on-one -on -one Zoom lesson, as I mentioned. If you're struggling, I'll do a Zoom lesson with you privately. No one has to know, you know what I mean? So like nothing to be ashamed of. There will be few courses. I'll be updating that courses every time, right? So right now I'm actually doing another slide to go on the course where I'll be teaching different tools. So like the Fibonacci. You know what I mean? Moving averages, all that. I'll be actually teaching you guys how to use everything, yeah? And how you can use them as conforming factors to get entry points and all that. And you will get purchase support. So like, I'll always be supporting you. You know what I mean? You always have me. Just message me, you know what I mean? Just message me. I'm always, I will be always there to like answer you guys and stuff. If you want to just enroll within the online course, you get lifetime access to the courses. You get Zoom lessons, like, throughout the week you will get zoom lessons and you will get free webinars and you get trade ideas as well so that's all you actually get when you just enroll within the online course so like the website will be everything will be actually be all 
All right, so that's the actual website. I right, tell so you everything will be out soon. I'll release everything. You know what I mean? So this is what I'll be actually showing you guys. That that will be the website I'm actually working on stuff now. So when I'm finished, I'll actually pop everything up for you guys and then let you guys know what's up. So let me just go back through some stuff. Give me two seconds. Let me just pop something up. So let me just show you something. All right, so I'm, I'm going to share a different screen for you guys to roll up. Right, so this is the actual academy, right? So this is a website for the academy. You can see things are already up. Everything will be announced soon. There's just a few simple things that need to be done before we actually go to. So when you actually enroll here, you can get you get courses where you can actually go right there. You actually enroll within the courses. You come there after you sign up, enroll or pay, whatever. You use your email or username after you create your account and then you just sign in right there. You can log in. You will get access through everything. So what you'll get access to, as I said before, once you enroll, you will get access to future courses. I'll be updating it regularly, to be honest. I'll be doing Zoom lesson. There will be time like this when I just do Zoom lesson, like night. Like, say, for example, in the afternoon, I'll just come and I'll just pop Zoom. I'll be, I'll be doing live trading as well with you guys. I'll show you how I actually go about looking for entries. You know what I mean? There's a lot. You know what I mean? There'll be a lot I'll be doing with you guys. You know what I mean? Because I'm always, most of the time I'm free, but right now I'm actually working on some other courses for like indices. But no, I'm actually, this, this will be our course for like currency pairs. So once you can master this, right? So once you, once you as a beginner trader can master like the basic of this course, you know what I mean? Like you can actually master any other assets or whatever you are you want to trade in the future so if you can master this you can actually master indices because this won't be any different from trading indices you know what i mean so like understanding the basics of the market i'll be there'll be a lot of stuff will be taking places on the course and it will be like a environment where we'll be teaching a lot of students so like you will get mentor you will get support you know what i mean support what you need probably what you never get before i know because i've get that a lot you know what i mean so there will be a lot to take away from our course. And what I, one thing that I always say, take notes, you know what I mean? Like, you're not gonna learn anything by just looking at a video. You need to write it down, practice, you know what I mean? Practice, practice and all that. So like, you can actually register to get the recordings of this course as well. So like, on the website, I know some of you have been saying that you are struggling with like, try to get access towards the um, workshop, but, I think the problem is from you guys side because we have checked, we did our checks and there's nothing that's been difficult on our side to make you guys not be able to enroll. But I've done it, I've registered, I've done it and it's been working for me. So that's how I know it's not our side because I've, I've registered myself and I didn't have any problems. So 
I think what some of you will need to do is actually, I think what some of you need to do is actually use a VPN because of the country difference. I think that might be the case, but I'm not sure. It's, it's all based on what browser you guys use. You know what I mean? So, so these will be the actual price. These will be the actually um, prices of the courses right there. So you can see where you just got the online course slash workshop. You know what I mean? So you got that right there. You got the pricing and all that. So you can purchase. Some of you have been messaging me, messaging us about, um, I think was Bitcoin option to pay. Yeah, so there'll be, there'll be an um, install for Bitcoin as well as an option for payment. I'll install it this afternoon. We will do it this afternoon. So there'll be that option as well. So let me just, um, so <clears throat> what I wanna see as well, yeah, one thing, if you're gonna enroll in the course, I will see like get a new notebook. Yeah, because I'm gonna go through a lot of shit with you, especially if you're gonna do the mentoring program, I'll go through a lot of stuff for you myself. So I'll show you how to draw trend lines. There, there, there's some easy stuff out there that I know you guys are actually struggling with. Yeah. A lot of you are actually struggling with it. So most of you will actually learn a lot. I know you will actually learn a lot from like when you actually um enroll in a course. Right, so you see, she straight away where it just allowed me to just um sign in right there. So you'll be logging and you get the other courses will be right here. So you will just come right there and you see myself right there. Everything will be here. So these are actually all the courses that's actually there. But as I said before, there's a strategy as well right there at the last. That's the one I want you guys to actually take notes of that strategy because it's one of the easiest way. It's one of the easiest ways you can actually get trading opportunities. And I know you guys are gonna learn a lot, especially from that. Just that alone will be a profitable strategy for you guys. What I want you to, what, one thing I want you guys to do as well, yeah? So like, if you enroll, don't just try and copy everything I'm doing, you know what I mean? Build on your own strategy. Yeah? So I'm just paving the way for you guys as beginners, right? So I'm showing you what's working for me, right? What you can do, Use what I'm teaching you on build and work on your own strategy because my trading style might not be profitable for you, but it would be profitable for me because one, I may have a large balance to hold certain jardim. You as a trader might not. So you need to understand that. You need to understand risk management as well when enroll, like when using this to actually take the opportunities and all that. So you know what I mean? So like this will actually show you like trend lines. You got support and resistance, price action candlesticks. So like it will show you like the different candlesticks that you need to look for to get certain entry points. So the course is the course is actually developed in a way that everything you're gonna be teach will actually be the number one goal, which is a BMA strategy, which is a break moving average strategy. So you're actually gonna get everything to enroll within that. So like all these that actually teach you is actually confirmation there for this final, final BMA strategy. Yeah? So everything that you're going to be taught during this is actually what you need to get to enroll on the last to go live on trading.
So you can just go there. You see, I already have an account, so I can actually enroll myself, you know what I mean? But overall, as, as you guys here, yeah, once you're interested, just drop. If you guys are interested, just drop, some, drop, drop me a message here yeah, on Telegram. And I'll... So let me just unmute. I think, bro, I, I've already unmuted everyone already, you know, because... I don't know what the issue is. I think the issue is like from most of you, you guys side yeah. because yeah. I've asked to unmute already. Yeah, 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 yeah so um, concerning our workshop, yeah, so the recordings for the workshop are also there on the on the websites here. Yeah, so um, let me just let me just see them. Okay, so if you go to the courses, you'd see the uh, the recordings for this particular workshop session here. And it's, yeah, it's very interactive. Yeah, so um, there's a lot. So as we go on, we'll be um, in uploading each of the sessions. There should be about 26 videos in this course, which is quite large. So it's very interactive also. So when you get there, after signing up and everything, so you just click on take this course. So this, should, this should enroll you in the course automatically. So you should be able to see everything. So we've uh, so we've already we've already uploaded most of the videos there. We've uploaded most of the videos there. Okay, I don't think we've uploaded this one. But then you could get a little short short quizzes. You get short quizzes at the end of each of the each of the courses. So it's quite interact interactive, but then it's very important for you to complete the, 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 the quizzes, but then for your own good, it would be nice to have it. So like, um, that's, that's okay. So I think that it's for, for now. So if you need the recordings or the PDFs for the courses, they're also on the on the on the website. So you could, you could always check them there. I'm sure you could, so you could take you could take any course on any, on each of the courses, there is a quiz attached. So you could try a look and see how much you know about the markets based on what we've learned there. So like um, just go through it and stuff like that. Yeah. So you could have fun, have fun on our websites, and we hope to get feedback from you guys on everything in time. So yeah, Martin, that's All right. So <clears throat> you finished, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good. Right, as well. What I'll be doing, I'll be giving away one of the courses for free. So. One of the lessons that we actually mean we actually gonna be live teaching. So let me just let me just pop something. Alright, so you see my screen, yeah. So I'll be actually going to be giving you guys like one of the free like on supply and demand that I've promised before. The reason why I haven't done it is because the workshop is actually going on in the morning. But however, the video is already recorded, just left for us to just release it or just put a release date for it. That as well will be a good way for you guys to be profitable, like paying close attention to supply and demand zones within the market here. Yeah. Will, I'll put it out on YouTube for free for future clients and for you guys who are here now. You'll actually get, you'll actually learn and take away something here. Yeah? And, and as I always said, take notes here. Yeah? So I don't really have nothing much. If you guys have any questions or a question or anything else you want to know, I'll this you can just drop, drop any one of us a message on Telegram and you'll get further discussion. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, you could just drop your question. Yeah, if you if you if you have any um, questions no, as well, and like you don't need to be shy to speak to anyone. You know what I mean, just unmute your call and ask a question, anything. Bro. Like, we'll I'll I'll answer you. I know he will answer you as well. I'll have any yeah. problem. 
So in the future, you can via the websites. Yeah, you could get uh, details on the contact us page on the website. Or if you feel better, you could use the live chat on the website. So we always get to respond to anytime. Yeah, there will always be a response on the uh, website as well. So like, we'll answer you guys no matter where. Like, if you message us on the website as well. Yeah, so we got the academy website and we got like the actually one government website where you actually get us 24-7, you know, 24-7, we're always available. So if you message us now, we can actually respond now towards you. Yeah, like, send the message in the chat. Anyone of you, yeah. what, I, what, I, what I want you guys to take away as well, like anyone of you who actually enrolled in the um, course or the mentoring program slash the course, yeah, like when, I, when you're actually inside of that group with different clients, yeah, don't be afraid, like don't be shy to actually speak, you know what I mean? Like be open up to each other, like, you guys are actually there to develop, like actually help each other. You know I mean, I'm, I'm there as well. So if I see something is wrong or you're going wrong, you know, what I mean? that's how I can actually know, right? You're struggling with this. You are struggling with this. So I can do that, right? Our next lesson, I'm going to discuss this. I'm going to show you guys how you can actually get over this. You know what I mean? Like there will be no problem of me doing that for you guys. You know what I mean? Like, and some of you have been asking me about signals group. One reason why I have stopped doing signal group, I have a sing, I had a signal group and it was 95 or probably 100% profitable. We had few stop losses, but like we never got like more than two stop loss. I think the most was either three stop loss for a week. But the thing is, it I never used to send a thousand signals. Yeah? There will be days when I will send like probably six signals in one day. And out of them six, eight out of six, either all them six will hit take profit one and two, yeah, or either will have one lose or probably a few drawdowns before they actually go into profit. But what I always want to say is like, the reason why I stopped doing it is because it doesn't make sense. Signals are for lazy people. If you want to actually learn to trade, like you can actually go about and just message anyone, you know what I mean? So like, if you actually want to invest in your time and actually reach further, like, you can actually enroll in the course, you know what I mean? I'm always here to help and support you guys. I mean, I have no problem. So that's one thing I want you guys to actually know. But that's it from me. I don't know if Edgar have anything, you know what I mean? But what I want to see as well, there will be some point where I'll be taking over that workshop. I'll be doing some of the lessons on that workshop as well. Edgar is only doing it by himself, not because I'm actually working on some stuff myself, you know what I mean? So... I think probably next weekend, if I, if I don't have anything on, I'll be probably taking the next lesson Friday, this Friday that's coming. Once there's nothing here, Friday that's coming. And what I'll do, the lesson will be done like on myself. I'll, I'll be doing it. So probably I'll be doing it late in the night so I can actually work with everyone time zone because not a lot of you have different time zones and probably have work to go to. So I will try my best to do it when I know everyone will be available. So yeah, that, that's, that's it. So... I haven't. I don't really have any um, issue, major issues or anything, unless you guys have anything you want to ask. But that's it from me. And I want to say thanks for coming on. You know what I mean? I mean, so like, take free education and learn. You know what I mean? I wish I, when I just started trading, you know, I wish I had someone to tell me anything. I had to learn it. I had to learn everything from scratch. Because I was a, I, I'm not gonna lie. I was a proper mom, like real. I was. I used to be like yo, like. There's times that I just blow me up and blow it, blow it, blow it, blow it, blow it. And I'm like, but the thing is, that I never gave up. That's a good thing, you know what I mean? So I didn't know anything at all. I'm being honest. Like, all I just did, I was just, if the candle turned green, I used to buy. If it turned red, I'm going to sell. It's just like that. And I know a lot of you probably still blowing accounts, but the good thing about it, as I said, you guys have me or you have Edgar, which is there. And there's still other people who you can contact through the support, you know what I mean? Like our customer service, they will actually help you and guide you if you actually struggle with anything. But if you're not happy, yeah, like if you're if you're not comfortable, like if they're not giving you enough information that you want, like just message me myself, you know what I mean? On Telegram or message Edgar and then we'll squeeze you away. You know what I mean? I have, I have no problem doing it. And I know we have, I know anyone on our team don't have any problem helping anybody. Yeah, so. Yeah, that, that's it from me, to be honest, you know what I mean? So, unless yeah. you have any further questions, just drop me a message, you want to say my battery mine's not true access any of this. No problem, guys. So, um, we appreciate you, you guys for... Really have no we appreciate you guys for joining the meeting. So, like, um, 
if you have any questions prior concerning this or you had you could send us a message on the website on our telegram wherever it is so just drop us a message or if there's anything there, if there's nothing else, yeah but i'll the um the um the link the link for the academy will be shared inside of the um so for this academy the link will be shared soon for um the actually um course itself yeah i'll, I'll actually share the um courses soon so if you guys just stay tuned for it, I'll pop it over inside of the um, workshop. So I'll yeah, pop yeah. it in the free Telegram group. So like, no need to worry or stress anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, you guys have access to loads of educational stuff. You know what I mean? Like, just get a new book, take notes. You know what I mean? Practice, practice, back test every single day. That's how you're actually going to get better. You're not going to get better by complaining about a problem. Yeah, complaining about a problem is just going to be there often. So... Me complaining about, like, I don't understand this, right? I'm just only complaining. That's not going to help me, you know what I mean? So that's what I want you guys to offer. Them. Like, that's it from me, though. So, like, thank you very much for attending, and yeah. I'm going to leave yeah. to try and fix things before we get later. So I will share, we will share the stuff, which, which will be this website. There will be a different le website where you can have, like, educational content, and we have our official website where you will have access to everything as well still. So, like, no need to worry or stress. We'll pop everything inside of the um, free Telegram channel. And for some of you who have been asking me about Bitcoin, right, I will pop... Just drop me a message if you want to pay with Bitcoin. So we'll square that away for you as well. But there will be an option on the website to pay with Bitcoin. But that's no problem. Hey guys, so keep your eyes, keep an eye on your inboxes, your mailboxes. We'll be sending details eventually. So thank you guys for joining us today. And sure, hopefully we would have another sweet session next week, Tuesday. So see you guys then. Take care.